Hello, this is Mrs. Clapp speaking, and I'll be reading Chapter 7 of The Red Kayak by Priscilla Cummings. In the morning, it was non-stop from the minute Dad came back from the 7-Eleven with three copies of the Baltimore paper. He spread out the Maryland page on the table so we could see the headline and the story. Boy rescues toddler from river. A 13-year-old Eastern Shore boy, alone in his 14-foot skiff, plucked a three-year-old from the frigid waters of the Corsica River yesterday afternoon and resuscitated the child while speeding through pelting rain to the waiting rescuers. Braden, Brady, Parks was one of a dozen people, including fire and rescue, law enforcement officials and watermen who responded to an emergency call yesterday morning that Virginia D'Angelo, 30, and her young son Benjamin were missing on the river. Virginia D'Angelo is reported in good condition this morning at Eastern General Hospital, while Benjamin, who was flown to the Pediatric Intensive Care Unit at Children's Hospital, remains in critical condition. Both suffered from prolonged exposure in waters estimated at 48 degrees yesterday when their kayak overturned. Thomas Parks, a waterman who aided the rescue effort, summoned his son Brady from school. Now, I figured Brady knew those waters as well as anybody, Mr. Parks said. But the younger Parks insisted he could have not have done it alone. Part of the credit goes to my dog Tilly, said Brady, an eighth grader at Alexander Holmes Middle School. She pointed me in the right direction. So on and so forth. The whole story. On the bus, the driver saluted me. And at school, all kinds of people patted me on the shoulder, shook my hand, or gave me a thumbs up. While I was at my locker, Mrs. Owens, the principal, came over and put her arm around my shoulders. Good for you, she said into my ear, embarrassing the heck out of me, because I was surrounded by kids who overheard everything, she said. I received a call from Channel 13 in Baltimore. They want to come out this afternoon and do an interview. Mm, is it okay with my parents? I asked. It's fine with them. Do you want to do it? I had never been on television before. Lauren Modley hugged her books and stared at me, her eyes doubling in size. Sure, I said, shrugging. Not too long afterward, eighth grade had an assembly in the gym to talk about the upcoming orientation day we were going to have over at the county high school. And at the end of it, Mrs. Owens announced, If you haven't already heard, we have a bona fide hero in our midst this morning, Brady Parks. Everyone in my class stood up and clapped. I know I blushed from head to toe, but man, what I wouldn't give to experience that moment again. It was terrific how everyone at school responded. Everyone except for JT and Digger, that is. My best friends. They didn't come over to wait for the bus with me that morning. And although I spotted them at the assembly, they didn't save me a seat or anything. So I didn't get to talk to them. And I never knew what they were thinking. Were they sorry we hadn't called out to Mrs. D'Angelo? Embarrassed because they had cheered on a near tragedy? What? What were they thinking? 
had started to hurt my feelings, that they never sought me out. But I wasn't going to let on that I was miffed. I even had an oxymoron ready for JT when I saw him, and he commented on the rescue. I was going to say, yeah, it was pretty ugly. The other thing was this. Almost the whole time in school, I didn't let myself think anything bad was going to happen to Ben. I was a little swept up in being a hero, I guess. I'd never been one before, and it felt pretty neat. Plus, I was sure that if something was wrong with Ben, the doctors at the hospital would have known it by then. Someone would have told me. Still, every once in a while, I couldn't help but think about that reporter's question and a sick feeling churned in my stomach. I was eager to tell JT about it. I decided I'd say something to him when we were together in social studies. Right after lunch. Before we took the exam. But, by then, everything had flipped upside down and I was gone. Taken out of school, fast, by my mother.